Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. And normally I do not report on things I see in the news, but today I'm gonna make an exception because I am really getting sick and tired of the media demonizing 3D printing every chance they get. Now the article in question was published to The Telegraph, which is a famous UK publication and it's titled Teenage Boy Killed in 3D Printing Explosion During School Art Project. Yeah, it literally says he was killed by a 3D printer explosion. Now before I go any further, I would like to say that my heart goes goes out to the victim. His name was Tom Taylor and he was only 17 years old and he did not deserve to lose his life. But the purpose of this video is to talk about how the media is demonizing 3D printing even when it's not to blame, even when it's not even in the realm of being involved in what really happened. Now, if we go back in time a little bit, you'll remember when everything in the media was about 3D printed guns, 3D printed guns, 3D printed guns. The media was demonizing it and everybody thought, oh my God, you could just go down to Staples, buy a filament based 3D printer on your desktop and just start cranking out guns and go like hold up banks and take down airliners. But after several months of perpetuating that fear, the public finally started wising up to it and they realized that it's not as easy as the media was making it out to be. Now the Cody Wilson guy, the defense distributed uh, president or CEO or whatever you want to call it, who designed it and perpetuated that fear was using far more sophisticated equipment and even the stuff that he was printing on desktop printers had to be highly modified afterwards to function. Now I proved all this when I printed my own AR-15 lower in a video that I did like a year or two ago and it, it was a disaster and I was using actually a really high-end desktop 3D printer. Now, the reason that the media wants to demonize 3D printing is because it's a new technology and it's catching on like wildfire and it's enabling people to be able to create and manufacture their own things at home and it's circumventing a lot of big business and it's quite frankly becoming a new industrial revolution. And there is a lot of fear mongering involved with that entire movement and the media capitalizes on fear. Now, in my case, they did just that. When I first saw the title of this article, I was like, <gasps> And that's exactly what they wanted me to do. But upon reading the article, you start to get the real facts about what's going on. Now let me read the first paragraph to you. It says, a 17 year old boy died in an explosion after flash paper from his family's online magic business ignited when he used hairspray on a 3D printer for a school art project. Okay, so now we're hearing the word flash paper. Now, flash paper is just a dumbed down name for something called nitrocellulose, which is an incredibly flammable and fast burning compound. It's also referred to as gun cotton because they literally used to use it in the ignition of a gun. But of course, they don't mention that in the title at all, even though that was the most combustible fuel source in this whole thing. So now let me read the second paragraph. It says sixth form pupil Tom Taylor used three canisters of hairspray to stick the piece of work to the hot plate of the printer after watching a technique online. Okay guys, I have personally even recommended using hairspray to stick things to 3D printers. I have actually pointed a can of hairspray point blank at a 100C build plate and never had ignition. Nothing on the 3D printer was hot enough to actually ignite the aerosol. And even if it did, it would just have a flame coming out of the front of the canister, you'd abruptly let go of it and it would just stop and there would be nothing else. So now we know that he used three cans of hairspray, that he basically discharged all that aerosol into the air. Now, the flammable propellant that's in the hairspray can started to accumulate in the air, where it hit perfect stoichiometry, which I learned from Mythbusters is the perfect mix between the air and the fuel, to cause a perfect ignition. But even with all the hairspray, he still had to have an ignition source. And I guarantee you that ignition source did not come from the 3D printer's hot end or the build plate. That ignition source came from something else. Now, could it have been a loose wire on the 3D printer that created an arc? Sure, lots of things in your house arc. Did you know when you turn on the light switch, there's actually a small spark? Yeah, don't fill up your entire room with propane and then flip the light switch on because you'll, you'll probably blow yourself up. And then the article is gonna read that light switch explosion killed 17 year old boy. So now get this, the third paragraph now, now starts to get down to the brass text. It's an electrical spark from either a nearby socket or the hot plate on the 3D printer. So they don't even know at this point. They're just saying that a random spark from somewhere ignited gun cotton, or they're calling flash paper, same thing, nitrocellulose, ignited something that has an incredibly low flash point that's designed to catch fire and burn extremely quickly at a low temperature. And they're still blaming the 3D printer in the title. So let's do a quick recap. This 3D printer is basically sitting on a pile of a very, very flammable nitrocellulose based paper that if it's exposed to any kind of flame or spark is just gonna instantaneously go poof and explode. Just like the old flashes on the 1800 cameras, people just poof. 
and he sprayed three cans of hairspray into the room. That's a lot of aerosol. So now you have a massive cloud of gas that can be ignited very easily, and you have additional fuel in the form of basically the gun cotton or nitrocellulose or flash paper. I'm using all the words because they're all interchangeable. You can go look it up. And they're blaming the 3D printer which is literally no more sophisticated than a freaking hot plate that you put your coffee on to keep it warm. Now let me explain something to you. The way a 3D printer works is it has something called a thermistor. The thermistor sticks inside of something called the heater block and the thermistor gets hot. Yes, it can get very hot. It can even almost get red hot, but will it create a spark or flame? No. Once it gets red hot, it transfers that heat to the block and then it maintains the heat using a thermostat that monitors it and doesn't allow it to go past a certain temperature. That's why it's able to melt the plastic and not burn the plastic. Now the hot plate down below on most 3D printers can only get to about 80 C. On the best 3D printers like the Ultimakers, uh, the Ultimaker 2 Plus, they can get to 100 C. That still is barely enough to keep your coffee warm, let alone ignite a fuel source. Now the fourth thing in this article that's wrong is they said that the boy was killed by the explosion and this is incorrect. He wasn't killed by the explosion. He was killed by the noxious fumes from the explosion and the smoke inhalation. They said that he tried to exit the room after the explosion but he collapsed before he got clear of the toxic fumes from the gun cotton and the hairspray and all of the stuff around him on fire basically. So he didn't die from the explosion. They make it sound like if you even look at the picture on the article it just looks like a giant freaking fireball everywhere. They're saying that's what killed him in the title, but then in the article below, they're like, oh, no, no, it was, it was smoke inhalation. Now, they do say in the article that the 3D printer that he was using was just a cheap $300 to $400 a uh, little put together low end 3D printer that he was using. So it's entirely possible that the wiring on it was faulty and he was getting sparks between a loose connection or something like that. But still at the same time, you have 20 things in the room with you at any given time, your screens, everything that can create some kind of ignition spark. You can even rub your clothes together and get enough static electricity that if the stoichiometry is right in the room, it will ignite the fuel source. But here's the part in the article that really pisses me off more than anything else in there. It says, we believe that Tom used hairspray on a 3D printer after watching a video online, the officer said. This is an extremely unsafe practice, which I advise against wholeheartedly. <sighs> we believe that's where Tom learned how to do this. Of course he learned how to do it from somewhere. It's a common tactic that people use for getting things to adhere to the bed. We don't say put three cans of hairspray onto it in a short period of time and blow yourself up. Hairspray is flammable. It says right so on the bottle that it's flammable. You don't use a ton of it. You also use alcohol to clean the bed on the printer. You don't use a ton of alcohol to clean the bed and blow yourself up. Everything in moderation. Him using three cans of hairspray in a room that had gun cotton under the desk stored and an ignition source, there's something's fishy here. This, this doesn't make sense. I mean, think about it. If you use three cans of hairspray on the build platform of a 3D printer, the damn thing would have like an inch thick gelatin layer that nothing would stick to. This is another case of just blaming the wrong thing. Unfortunately, Tom made some bad decisions that led to more bad decisions, which led to a huge explosion that cost him his life. And that is tragic and that sucks. And I hope that everybody learns from this mistake that you probably shouldn't spray three cans of hairspray on the build plate of a cheap $300 3D printer when it's sitting on top of blocks of C4. What really makes me mad about this clickbait style type of article is that they're doing it just to get fear. They're just, they're doing it because people are like, oh my God, I've heard about 3D printing. That, that's a big thing right now. I'm going to go click on that and see what happened. But the 3D printer was nothing more to do with his death than anything else. Same thing could have been happening if he was doing his hair up with hairspray, because I've seen some, some people use a lot of hairspray. When there was an ignition source in the room or somebody turning the light on or off or somebody, you know, mess plugging something in and out of an outlet, all those things can cause sparks. And those sparks can lead to ignition if you have a high enough concentration of something in the room. The truth is, if there was a high enough concentration of that hairspray in the air to cause an ignition in thin air, he was really, really not letting it dissipate at all and just building it up over and over and over again. And I can't tell you why he would have done that, but it's very fishy. But the most tragic thing about this is that Tom Taylor lost his life. And if you read the article, he's actually a really, really nice kid. He was known for being kind and generous. And, and I wholeheartedly believe all of that. The tragedy that happened was due to a lot of little mistakes happening, like storing a very, very flammable, almost explosive nitrocellulose paper 
underneath the desk where the 3D printer is, and then discharging massive amounts of flammable gas into the air in the proximity of the printer and having a spark or ignition source somewhere nearby while this was happening. Basically what happened here is a perfect storm of horrible shit. I own eight 3D printers now. I've run them 24 hours a day. I've had them malfunction in the most catastrophic ways possible, where even the thermistor has popped out of the heater block and ran red hot for an entire day. And you know what? Nothing has ever exploded. I've never had to use my fire extinguisher, nothing. This was a clear case of an accelerant being in the proximity of a spark and exploding and causing a fire. And just because he happened to be using a 3D printer at the time, that's what they blamed because that's what's hot. And that's that's that just pisses me off. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. I gotta get ready for Tech Talk with Jay's Two Cents. Uh, uh, this will probably be published after that. And we're probably gonna talk about this a little on the show. So make sure you go over to Jay's Two Cents channel and check out the latest Tech Talk after watching this. Thanks for listening, guys. If you enjoyed this, please push the like button. Leave a comment down below on what you think about this. Even if you disagree with me and you think that the printer actually was the cause of his death, be sure and leave it down in the comments below. Let's talk about this, but... Honestly, this stuff just, it really gets me worked up, man. It really does. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself. <laughs>